Hello and welcome to another episode of the e-commerce coffee break. Today I want to talk about Shopify 2.0. The OS 2.0 came out a couple of months ago and brought a lot of new features. One of the features are sections and that's what I want to talk about. We want to find out what is sections, why do you need sections and all of these things. So for that reason I have with me an expert who can tell us a little bit more about it. Ronan Hirsch, he's the founder of quickcode.com. Ronan has 18 years of experience designing and developing a varied variety of websites and about a year ago he realized that he has created specific content sections for Shopify sites. So this is how we code was born so we want to dive a little bit deeper into that and learn more about that so hello ronan how are you today hi klaus uh thank you for having me uh excited to uh to have this chat um, Give me a bit of background where you're coming from what got you into development into shopify so a general background i mean i studied uh, about 20 years ago over in, in eindhoven in holland uh product design and I always had this background of uh, being a geek with computers and, and, and coding and all that. And I would create presentations in Flash, if you remember the old days of creating, <laughs> creating presentations. And then I created a website for myself and for a friend and for this. And I realized that I really like it. So I just continued on that path um, of, of creating mainly in the, in the beginning, like portfolio type websites for friends and then for clients and and uh it kind of grew from there and then the the transition over to html and javascript um and about 10 years ago i got into shopify specifically and then i worked a lot with shopify building all sorts of sites i, ne I never did let go of uh, wordpress um and doing uh, uh sites you know creating sites that, there um but my main focus especially in the past few years have been has been uh shopify uh, working with a ver variety of different clients, uh, creating custom cu custom websites, not really just installing a theme and then, you know, doing that. But a lot of, you know, because of budget, um, a lot of people don't have the, the, the resources to create these big, you know, these uh, more custom type websites. Uh, so we do install a theme and then tweak it. So it's kind of like a semi-custom. Um, and from there, I basically realized, hey, I'm creating a lot of uh, a lot of custom sections for sites, which we'll get into. Um, and and I thought, you know, why not sell these these sections? It'll be easy, and it'll save time uh, for for other designers and developers uh, alike, save time and and money because you know they can they can do that. Okay, so now it has been a couple of months and gave people time to move old from the old framework in the OS 2.0 framework. And I think a lot of merchants have already changed their theme or upgraded their theme to a OS 2.0 theme. Mm -hmm. And with that came sections, apps, blogs, and other things. So give me a bit of a background. What makes the huge difference there and what actually is a section? All right, so with Shopify 1.0, I mean, you always had sections with Shopify. But the, the 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 nice flexibility that sh that sections brought were mainly on the home page, where in the home page you can add in a section, you can move it around, you can select it. Basically, like if a lot of Shopify owners or designers know, you 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 really could play around with the options that the theme provided you, but only on the home page. You could add them to other pages, but then you really did need to know, you know, you how to code it how to how to how to import it in it wasn't really plug and play and then came shopify 2.0 where it actually opened it up where all of the sections available you can add them to any of the pages and that was that's one of the biggest things in my mind that 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 um that 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 upgrade brought um now a section just to describe a little bit about what, what a section is. I mean, each each web page, when you probably know, you have different areas where one may be featured products, one is just a text blurb or or columns of you know um, an image and a click to read more, like for for blog posts or for for basically anything. Um, so you can include as many as you want on each page depending on how you want to guide the, the the visitor over to you know different content on the site okay now with the sections what kind of features or what kind of functionality can you create with sections 
Well, it really dep it depends on the, on the type of section. Um, you can basically create, I mean, you can create a, anything content based on the front end, um, you know, whether it's, um, you know, like you wanna show uh, um, testimonials, for instance. So you can have like a rotator or carousel of showing, you know, the different quotes or reviews that, that, that you got. Um, you can show, you know, a, a carousel of featured products, of different different types of, 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 of content blocks, basically. And there's a few different ways that we can call it. We can call it a section, which sounds more technical. You could say a content block, um, a, temp a content template, or something like that. Um, and, you know, so now with Shopify 2.0, you can really add those in, for instance, on a product page, you want to put in specific reviews for that product and have it rotate. So we talked about, you know, this, this carousel. So you can now easily add that in and then, and then put those reviews in there or a quick or a FAQ specific to that product or a question that's always asked about shipping or refund policy or things like that. You can have one of those, um, um, um accordions where you click it and it expands and then you can show you know so previously it was very difficult to add now with shopify 2 it's it's much easier to to do it especially if you have that section and then that's where quick code kind of comes in because then you have a theme usually you would download a theme and then you'd have an x amount of sections that the theme comes with um, but then it doesn't have that specific thing that you want to show you know that, that you want to have or you have it, but that button, you wanna change the location of it, or you wanna change the, the, the proportion of the image. Some themes have just square images that you want um, to put in a por uh, portrait. Um, and, so, and so we created these themes to be very, very flexible in topography with, with font, uh, font sizes, line height, spacing between each very element, you can change the proportions of the images. Um, you can have different types of sliders, like whether it's a fa fading or, or sliding. So you can do all, all sorts of things like that. Um, and it's very, I didn't mention, of course, it sounds very technical, like, okay, so how do I add them actually to the site? Um, and we created it, to, it's actually very easy where you would download a file, a zip file. Inside you have, you have one file, sometimes two, depending if there's JavaScript involved or not. And you'd basically just copy the content of that file, which is just a regular text file. You'd go over to the uh, section, to the uh, e uh, code editor inside Shopify, and basically just create a section and paste that code in, and then you're done. Then you would go to the theme editor and edit. And of course, everything, we have uh, you know um, video tutorials and we have a PDF to explain everything. And of course, support if anybody has any problems with it. Okay, very good. So yeah. in a nutshell, you create a, a block that is fully functional, fully tested, full customizable, and then you just import that into your theme. Yeah. Now, you already answered a lot of questions that I had, but one question I have <laughs> is like, what are the most common um, sections that you see that people need and that they don't get with a with a theme? Well, one one, one of the big ones is uh, uh, like a comparison table. A lot of people, you know, want like if you go into a more of a service-based site, but also you know different products where you have the table and you compare the different values and everything. So usually you don't see that in themes. So you can get something like that where you really can put in. I think the limit is sixteen different rows and then three or four columns, and then you can just put them in whether it's an image or just a check mark a number of text, and then you can really compare the, 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 the products. Um, another one, for instance, a parallax banner. So, so parallax banners, for instance, they do come with themes. Um, it, it is quite a, a, a popular one, but one that we've created, we, we allow for video, we allow to change the sizing of the, of the height to put a text block on it and to change the location of the block. So we have a lot of extra features that usually you wouldn't get with just a standard, put in the image, maybe a little bit of text and that's it. And then the rest of the theme uh, solves for you. Um, more ordinary ones, uh, which we also include like 
um, columns or a regular carousel, you know, of, of, of links, whether it's to, a, pro, uh, to a, a list of products in a collection or just various ones to, to, uh, to different blog posts or something like that. Um, we also have um, that, that option as well. Um, but it's just, we give that extra functionality where for instance, our, our target market is they're, they're either designers, web designers who, you know, they have clients and they build the site directly from the theme editor and merchants. So for designers, for instance, they really do want to get into all the little line height, letter spacing, all the little time, the, the topography uh, settings. Um, and so they can easily put it in and they have a little bit more experience with code as well. Um, so that they would be able to change things if they need to. And then theme mer and then um, store merchants where, hey, just plug and play, you know? And then they can they can adjust it as they see fit. Okay. Yeah. So I see on your website, you have quite a, a range of different sections that are pre-built. Um, mm -hmm. If somebody wants to have a customized section, is that something you can help with too? Yes, definitely. We have, we have an option, um, to we can either install it for them if they're if they're interested um but of course if they have something that's not quite what they see in the collections then yeah we we definitely can take uh and create uh custom sections i mean that's what we've been doing for for many years like i said so we've been doing all sorts of things like that and then we said hey let's sell them but it, but there's always somebody who said hey i want something a little bit different than that or something completely new and we're always open to uh, to you know develop something like that. We have a we have a specific page for that to uh, to to show. I think that's most of the cases. People don't know what they don't know or what they want. <laughs> yeah. So helping them and pointing them in the right direction definitely helps. Now, when it comes to the themes, obviously the store needs to have a OS two um, theme already installed. Are there any kind of limitations when it comes to the themes itself or does your sections work generally with all of the themes? Generally, they do work with all of the themes. We've tested it on a, on a variety of themes and the way we code it, um, there, should, there, there shouldn't be any, any limitations. Um, we, have, we have encountered on occasion like, hey, I put this on this theme and it didn't really work. We went in, you know, within 10 minutes, we solved the problem. Um, but yeah, there's no, there shouldn't be any limitations because at the end of the day, it's HTML. Um, we really keep the, the code intact with their own like special class names and all this technical stuff so that it wouldn't interfere with other, with other sections. Okay. So what's, yeah. what's the price range of these, um, sections? So the range usually it's, it's between about. 60 or $80 up to about 130 um, and or 140 or 30. We, we, it depends really on the, on the, on the complexity of it. Um, we set the price basically thinking about how much would it cost for the customer to actually do this on, the, on their own. Or if they have this, even if they have the specific, uh, you know, um, the specific section on the theme already, but they want to make a few of those tweaks. So we're thinking, okay, so if they go out, reach out to a to a uh, to a developer, and it'll that work would take at least two three hours at least. Sometimes it could take maybe an hour, but then you know calculating all that and the time that they're going to save and the, and the, and the, and that money, then it seems like it's something that's very. Um, that that would be very you know, uh, worth it to save that time and just to get it in there. And even if they have a little problem, you know, within 24 hours, usually we, uh, we, we fix that problem. Mm -hmm. With all yeah. your experience of 10 years with Shopify, what's the most common um, issue that Shopify store owners have with their themes? Where, where, there's, where do they struggle the most? Um, a good question because usually we solve a lot of them um i mean this the the the, the kind of the struggle is to get content um on different pages like you have this 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 feature called meta fields if you've heard of it um the meta fields it's been a it, it, it was even there during shopify 1.0 but it was much harder to use but 
the struggle is to get specific content, even if, in, if you're using a section on multiple pages or multiple templates, then you would add in content on one, but if you're using that template elsewhere, it could replicate to the, another page. And so then you have to duplicate the template and create that. So that was, that was kind of a struggle to do. But now with meta fields, you can make it much smarter where even with the template, you can add in, you can have the, uh, the content in the section. Um, you set it up to, the, uh, to pick a meta field instead of the content that's in the theme editor itself. So I think that was that was one one thing that that a lot of uh, a lot of merchants struggle with. Okay. Yeah. What would be a golden nugget? What you would tell a Shopify merchant when they look at their theme? Because obviously they're looking at it a lot usually as as a merchant, mm -hmm. and you sort of do not see the forest because of the trees. So what would you recommend? What they need to look at? Um, to really look at the, I guess the path of the visitor once he arrives at the homepage. Um, you know, you don't really want, even if we, we, we offer like multiple image sliders, you don't wanna put in too much information. You don't want for somebody to come in and see a lot of images and text and, and too many things. You wanna guide the user all the way to the product or to the main product or to tell the, the visitor, hey, we offer A, B and C, were you interested in and get them as fast as possible to a collection and then to a product um, without too much information, you know, too much that, 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 that'll that clutter any, any, any page. Um, they're kind of, I mean, in our world, it's kind of like the basics, you know, it's like, Hey, you want the CTA to be bold and everything, but merchants, ma mainly merchants don't really know that, or don't really think about how, how to get, you know, more people over. So, very good tip. 100% agree with you. Um, where, Ronan, can people find out more about your solution? So so, so the website is uh, quickcode.com, um, Q-W-I-Q-O-D-E.com. Um, I guess you hear the, the little play on words of quick code. Um, so we're, we're on Instagram, we're on LinkedIn, uh, Facebook, uh, and of course the studio, I mean, the studio that I've been running for, for 18 years of Studio Umbrella, um, where we really take in, do all sorts of websites, especially you know, like Shopify and WordPress, like I mentioned. Uh, and that's uh, Studio Umbrella, T-U-D-I-O-U-M-B-R-E-L-L-A.com. Um, and then of course we have the Instagram and everything uh, there as well. Cool. I will put the links as yeah. always in the show notes that you're only one click away. Ronan, thanks so yeah. much for your time. I think that was very insightful and I think it helps merchants save a lot of time and problems to go for uh, sections that are already pre-made instead of doing them from scratch. Thanks so yeah. much for your time. Well, thank you very much. Take care. Hey, Klaus here. Before you go, I would like to invite you to become part of the e-commerce Merchant Pro community to get actionable advice from other Shopify merchants who already have achieved what you are aiming for. Our community is a safe place to actively grow your online retail business with the support of the most amazing and helpful group of e-commerce entrepreneurs behind you. Running a Shopify business is tough. Don't do it alone. Join us now, you will find the link in the show notes. Also, if you think your online store has conversion or marketing issues and you would like to have a fresh set of eyes on your business, then drop me an email at klaus at klauslauter.com and let me know a little bit about your business. It might be beneficial for you to have me look over your store, offers, emails and ads and get an unbiased outside perspective and guidance to help you make most of your online business. Thank you as always for tuning in today. I appreciate you until next time and I talk to you soon.